Today's lesson is 1.2 arithmetic series found on pages 22 to 31 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is the same. It's demonstrating understanding of arithmetic and geometric, both finite and infinite sequences and series. And our lesson objectives, first, we need to be able to identify an arithmetic series. Second, we need to learn the Gaussian method of determining an arithmetic series. Third, we need to learn and understand both formulas for arithmetic series, sorry. And fourth, to work with real world problems that involve arithmetic series. So an arithmetic series is a list of numbers separated by an adding sign in which each term is found by adding or subtracting the same number to the previous term. So for example, we've got 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9. So this one is going up by 2 each time. And in the, another case, we have 5 plus 1 plus negative 3 plus negative 7. And this would be where the common difference is actually negative 4. So they're quite similar to arithmetic sequences, except instead of being separated by commas, they're actually an adding question. So Carl Friedrich Gauss was a French mathematician who at a very young age found a method that allowed him to add all the numbers from 1 to 100 in mere seconds. And this would be an arithmetic series that starts at 1 and goes up by 1 all the way up to 100. And this is what I call the Gaussian method. So what he did is he, he wrote down 1 plus 2 plus 3 and he knew that he was going to add all the numbers all the way to 100. And then what he did is he wrote it backwards. So 100 plus 99 plus 98 all the way down to 1. And so what he realized is that in each time that he adds these two numbers together, so he adds the top row to the bottom row, he gets 101 each time. And being the smart young fellow that he was, he knew that since he went from 1 to 100, there was 100 terms, and that means he had 100 times 101. But since he added two series together, and he just wants to get the result from adding one of these series together, he just took his number and he divided it by 2. And that's the way that Carl Friedrich Gauss was able to add from 1 to 100 um, in seconds um, when he was about 10 years old. So we're going to use this method, this Gaussian method, to help us develop a formula that we can use to find the sum of an arithmetic series. So instead of using actual numbers, we're going to be using the following variables, and they're the same variables that we used yesterday. We're going to use t1 as our first term, we're going to use n as our number of terms, d as our common difference, and tn as our last term, which is sometimes called the nth term, which we talked about yesterday. So first let's just review. Gauss wrote the numbers from 1 to 100, and then he wrote them backwards, and what he did is he ended up adding both these rows together and got a whole series of 101s. Then he realized because there was 100 terms, he had 100 101s. And since he had um, added both rows together, he divided it by 2 so he would only get the sum of one of those series. So if we take a look at this, this 100 is the number of numbers he had. And that would be our number of terms. So we're going to say our SN formula which is the sum of n and a number of terms, um, is your number of terms. And now we have 101. Well, what he did was add the first term and the last term together. And so that would be t1 plus tn. And then at the end, he just divided by 2. So this is a formula we can use to write the sum of any arithmetic series as long as we have the first term, the last term, and the number of terms. All right, so the previous formula we just found will work well if we know the actual last term. Um, however, sometimes we may just know how many terms we have, but not the actual value of the last term. So we're gonna develop a formula. It's gonna be a little more complicated than last time, but we're gonna develop this formula um, that'll help us find out the sum of any sort of series as long as we know the first term, the number of terms, and the common difference. So we're just going to adjust the way that we found our formula. So if we look at this, this could be any arithmetic series. So the sum of any series is your first term, and then you add d to it. So there's your second term. And then you'd have a third term and the fourth term, fifth term, all the way to our last term. Now this, if, this should look familiar to you because this was tn equals t1 plus n minus 1 times d. That's from last day. So that should look familiar to you. So next, we're going to add the same thing, but backwards. So we just flip this whole thing around. So our first term, our second term, all the way to our last term. 
And if this was our last term and it was n minus 1d, then our second last term is n minus 2d. And then we're going to add these two things together, and we get 2sn equals, so we have t1 plus t1, and that is 2t1, and then we have n1 minus d. So that's these two things added together. Now for these two things that are added together, it may not look like it, it'll work, but it will. We have t1 plus t1, which is two t1s, and then we have a d plus an n minus two d. So if we actually did the math, if we expanded that thing, we get d plus n d minus two d, and that ends up being just d minus two d is negative d. And if we take out the greatest common factor of d, we end up with n minus 1d. So it doesn't matter which of these terms that we add together, we always get the same thing, and that's 2 times the first term plus n minus 1 times d. So next, we know that there are n terms here. Um, so this was our first term, this is our second term, all the way to our nth term, and this would be our n minus 1 term. So that means we have 2 times t1 plus n minus 1 times d, n amount of times. And finally, that means that when we finally solve for this thing, and this was 2sn because we added sn together twice. And when we're finished, here is our formula. So the sum of any number of terms, if we know the number of terms, is n times 2t1 plus n minus 1 times d, all divided by 2. So let's take a look at our first example. It says a male fireflies slash in various patterns to signal location or to ward off predators. Different species of fireflies have different flash characteristics, such as the intensity of the flash, the rate of the flash, and the shape of the flash. Suppose that under certain circumstances, a particular firefly flashes twice in the first minute, four times in the second minute, and six times in the third minute. Determine the total number of flashes for the male firefly in 42 minutes. So first, it's always good to write down your series. So it says in the first minute, he flashes twice. And in the second minute, four times. And in the third minute, six times, etc., etc., etc. All the way up to the 42nd minute. And it said total number of flashes. That's why I'm going to be adding these things together. That way I know it is a series and not a sequence. So we can use our new formula, which is Sn equals n times 2t1 plus n minus 1d divided by 2. So we're taking the sum of the first 42 terms, and our number of terms is 42. We have 2 times t1 is our first term. We have n we know is 42 again, so that's 42 minus 1 times our common difference. Well, this series is going up by 2 each time, so that'll be a 2, and that's all divided by 2. And from this point, you can do it however you want. Um, you can simplify everything inside the square brackets and then multiply by 42 and divide by 2. So that would be 4 plus, that is 41 times 2, all divided by 2, which is 42 times, this is 41 times 2 is 82, 82 plus 4 is 86, that's all divided by 2. And when you multiply those two numbers together, divide by 2, you get 1806. So this firefly will flash 1806 times in 42 minutes. All right, here's our last example. It says the sum of the first two terms of an arithmetic series is 19, and the sum of the first four terms is 50. What are the first six terms of the series and the sum to 20 terms? So right now, you might not have any idea on how to start this, um, and you might just try a guess and check method, which might leave you here all day. So we're gonna use the formula our SN formula, and then we're gonna fill in what we do know. We know that it says the sum of the first two terms is 19. So we can write an equation by saying 19, that's the sum of the first two terms, is equal to N being two. Now the only thing is we don't know what T1 is, so we'll leave it as T1, plus, we know that there's only two terms in this series, so it's two minus one. We don't know what D is, and we know that that's divided by 2. So we can simplify this thing. Um, we can see that these 2's are going to cancel each other off, because 2 divided by 2 is just 1. So we end up with 19 equaling 2t1 plus d. Now we can do the similar thing with this next statement, which says uh, the sum of the first four terms is 50. 
So we can do the same thing. We'll let 50 equal the sum of the first four terms. So we know n in this case now is 4. We still don't know our first term. And we still don't know our common difference. So we will write it like this. And we will simplify this equation as well. 50 times 2 is 100. And then I get 4 times 2t1 plus 3d. And that gives me 100 equaling 8t1 plus 12d. So here I've got two equations with two variables. Now we've learned that we can use substitution or elimination in order to solve any time that we have two equations with two variables. So I am going to use substitution because I see that I can get d all by itself here pretty easily. And so that means d is going to equal 19 minus 2t1. So I'm going to take this d, I'm going to substitute it into this other equation. So I now get 100 equaling hT1 plus 12 times 19 minus 2T1. And now I've got one equation with one variable, so I can now find our first term. So we have 100 equaling 8T1 plus 12 times 19 is 228 minus 24T1. I can combine like terms and move the 228 over to the other side, so I get negative 128 equaling 8t1 minus 24t1, which is negative 128 equaling negative 16t1, and I can find that t1, our first term, is equal to 8, just by dividing by negative 16. Now I know my first term, I just need to find my common difference. To do that, I can plug this t1 equals 8, plug it into this equation right here. So my common difference is 19 minus 2 times 8 which is 19 minus 16, which ends up being three. So the first part of this question says, what are the first six terms of the series? Well, this series, first six terms, we know T1 is equal to eight, and then it goes up by three each time. So we get eight plus 11. Quick check tells me that eight plus 11 is 19. So it looks like we're on the right path here. Add another three onto that where we have 14, add another three, we have 13, add another, not 13, we have 17, add another 3 and we have 20, and finally we have 23. So we can also double check the first four terms, add them up, and they will also equal 50. So we've done, we found out our first term, we found out our common difference, and we did that by creating two different equations, and then using either substitution or elimination. Now, the last part of the question says we need to find out the sum to 20 terms. So we'll use our sum formula and we will figure that out. So we have 20 terms. We have two times T1, we know is eight now. We know that N minus one is 20 minus one, which is 19. And we know our common difference is three. That's all divided by two. When you work this whole thing out, you're going to find that your sum is 730. Your sum of the first 20 terms of this series is 720. So in summary, an arithmetic series is basically when you add all the terms of an arithmetic sequence together. And there are two formulas that you can use when dealing with arithmetic series, and these depend on the information you're given in the question. One may be better to use than the other. So our first one is SN equals N. Remember, N is your number of terms times your first term plus your last term all divided by 2 and we develop that one together and sn equals n times 2t1 plus n minus 1 times d all divided by 2 we also developed that one it was a little bit harder but it uh, it was to show you that these formulas can be developed they're not just magical and appear from nowhere our formula from last lesson may also come in handy for some questions and that was our tn formula and our tn equals tn being the last term equals your first term plus your number of terms minus one multiplied by your common difference. So once again, writing out the series will help you identify the values for the variables in these formulas. And your assignments on pages 27 to 31. Good luck and we'll see you in class.